So, uh, you know, you, you were predicting, I mean, everything is kind of, you know, falling into place as far as, you know, what you were saying earlier in the week when we had, when we had you on, what, four days ago and everything like that. But the fact that it's cold, I mean, I thought I was, I thought I was in Sinania the other day. It felt like Siberia. So, yeah, we, we actually had a phone call yesterday about, uh, about the uh, typhoon coming or if there was a typhoon coming. And so we had to say no. Uh, right now, the the trade winds are in charge. And this is typical of the dry season that we see. We see these little wet spills. Uh, these shear lines is the very southern extent of the cold front. But uh, so while we really see the the stronger winds, the higher seas and surf with these uh, these wind events, uh, one of the other things about it is it actually does cool things off quite a bit. It makes it feel quite nice outside, especially if you're working outside during the day. But when it is rainy at the same time, it can feel extra chilly. So I'm actually, my hands are just freezing right now. Of course, I've been inside all, all morning. Yeah, I've been bundling up uh, a lot. Like when I go home, like in, in the air conditioner, I was like, man, it's cold here. And then you go, yeah, and you, you can, go outside and, and yeah, like you said, I mean, it's, there's this natural because of that cold front that, that like has slowly been, you know, making its way southward yeah. to us. And then plus it's been very, very breezy. And then it rains on top of that. So it's like. There yeah, may be well, a market on Guam for thermal uh, underwear right now. I mean, you never know. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I had a fireplace. But, <laughs> you know, the, the meteorologically speaking, the, the change is very subtle. And so what we look for is the dew points. And uh, so typically uh, across the Marianas, we see dew points around 75, 76 degrees. And what that means is, uh, is a relationship to the moisture content in the air, so the water vapor. Now, at nighttime, as the air temperature cools down from the 80s, it uh, drops down to 76, uh, 75 degrees. Once it reaches that dew point temperature, that is when we have dew form on the ground. Mm -hmm. So if the dew point temperature drops down to 70, that means that the, the air temperature has to drop even cooler to get that dew to form. And, and so we see that the trend in the dry season, when these shear lines drop to the south of us, uh, as we saw a couple of days ago, our dew point temperature dropped down to the upper to mid 60s. So wow. basically that really dried us out. It allows the nighttime temperatures to cool. But more importantly is when you're outside walking in the rain, you get wet. That dew point temperature is going to try or the drier air is going to try to evaporate that moisture off of your body. And, and so the, the heat process uh, it actually pulls heat away from your body as that as that moisture on your skin mm -hmm. evaporates, and that's why you get cold. Uh, when I visit schools to talk about weather, uh, the the easiest explanation is, is is to say, think of when you're getting out of the shower. As soon as you get out of the shower, that you're in the dry air and you're starting to get cold. You got to dry off really quick. Mm -hmm. That's because the water is trying to evaporate off your skin. And, uh, and so that's what we're seeing right now. It's just being that much more accentuated uh, with these lower dew points. And uh, so you just have to put on the extra layers uh, when you go outside into this rainy weather that we're seeing. Now, when it comes to that, you know, when it comes to the science, Brandon, of, of how, you know, like temperature, like here in the islands are affected and everything like that. I'm sure the fact that the sun comes up later and later in the morning. I mean, you know, like Joe Sir was out this morning at like what, 6.15, mm -hmm. Joe Sir? And, and he got like a shot of outside this, you know, normally we'd have these beautiful, you know, skylines of Harmon, which is basically like a lot of power poles and like a wonderful like sunrise. Uh, but today, you know, I mean, it was still dark. I mean, you would think it was like still three in the morning. And I'm sure that has something to do with the temperature being being dipped. Yeah. So typically uh, when the sun sets, uh, the the earth, the ground is re-radiating that heat that are absorbed during the day uh, via long wave uh, radiation. So that's the just gradually radiating uh, up from the earth's surface. And so that's going to continue through the entire night. And, and that's why usually we see the coldest temperatures uh, based on that uh, pattern. Coldest temperature happens a little bit before sunrise. That's mm -hmm. why we see the dew in the mornings. But as soon as the sun comes up, uh, we start heating up. Right now, the sunrise is occurring about 645 in the morning. It's the latest that the sunrise occurs uh, during the year. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we are in that part of the Earth's orbit around the sun. And with the Earth's uh, axis tilt to about 23 and a half degrees, the sun is uh, at the very southernmost extent over the Earth. As we head toward the summer, though, uh, we're going to see that the sun is going to uh, it's going to appear like it's rising north into the northern latitudes. 
And so that sun will become overhead. Sunrises will be earlier and the sunsets are going to be later. Sure. And then we're just going to be dreaming of these cooler uh, dry season days. And how, how long is it going to be? How many months? Because some people like tend to think out here because we've basically got, you know, 10 months of sunshine on Guam and then 60 mm-hmm. days of rain, you know, spread out. Right. Uh, we don't really have the four traditional seasons like you'd have like in other countries. And and we don't of course, we don't have, you know, like daylight savings time like those crazy mainlanders have and everything. But how long should it be until we get back to the point when when six o'clock hits, Mr. Sun is already up and, you know, I <laughs> the chickens are already crowing. You know, you get the natural Guam alarm clock, basically. Well, uh, around March. Uh... So right now, the, right the, the winter solstice, uh, yeah, well, the winter solstice was uh, December 21st. So that's when the, the sun is at its southernmost extent. And uh, so over the next several months, the sun will be climbing up in latitude. And uh, so the uh, spring equinox is March 21st. That's when the sun is overhead the equator. Mm-hmm. And, and then heading in from March, April, May, June is when we're going to start seeing the sun come overhead. Our shadows our shadows instead of leaning out away from us are going to be directly under us and that's where we're going to start seeing it's going to start feeling much hotter and and then the real change occurs as we head into the wet season transition uh, and most notably the trade winds uh, die down and so right now it's the trade winds that help uh, make the uh, the tropical heat bearable Mm -hmm. Uh, it's drier it's stronger winds but as we head into the summer months, that's when the winds die down, humidity increases, and then we're just all suffering. Mm, yeah, and then, <laughs> and then of course, you know, of course, you know, like you're a weatherman, not necessarily like a medical expert and everything like that. But with this sudden uptake in cases and everything like that, colder temperatures, it's raining, it's windy, and everything like that. You know, do what you got to do to, you know, stay warm. Don't unnecessarily, you know, maybe don't work out in the yard if you're going to get wet, and then go inside in the aircon because the last thing you want to do is catch like a little ticky tack cold like these days with like so many people popping positive. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of the things uh, when, when I'm giving my son a bath, first thing I make sure he is completely dried off before we head into the air conditioned room or whatever. Cause you just Hello don't in the background. We got, we got, we got one of your colleagues uh, video bombing us right now. Hello, hop a day. <laughs> bring, hey, bring her on the, sh- bring her on the show. Yeah, yeah. Bring her in, man. It's a family show. We get everybody here. This is uh Isa, one of our newer forecasters. She's Hi, Isa. Hey, can, 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 may, may we may we have an introduction to Isa? Are you are you on your phone or your uh, laptop? I am on the phone right now. Yeah, bring, so, uh, yeah, let, can, let me uh, let me turn around real quick and. Uh, I, I don't believe it's a matter of national security if uh, if we meet Isa, right? No. <laughs> so uh, here we go, Isa. Come on by. So Hi, Isa. This is, uh, oh, hello, Isa. Hello, Hoffa Day from KUAM. Good morning. So this is uh, Jason says hello. Good morning from KUAM. Good he morning. He is waving. He is waving very vibrantly. And uh, this is Isa. She is one of our newer forecasters, and she's doing some great things here in the office. And uh, but she's here to do some work and uh, work on the computer systems. Hey, well, you got you got a really really good team over there, and good good to see that um, you know uh, headcount is expanding and everything like that. You know you can never have too Absolutely. many meteorologists. Yeah, we've had uh, we've had some retirements in the past year, and uh, so. We're, we've got a, a massive influx of new forecasters, so it's, uh, we've seen a lot of change here at the weather office. And uh, so we've been very, very fortunate to, to have a lot of uh, uh, new folks join us straight out of college. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's been a fun process getting everybody trained in. Uh, the, most people in uh, stateside colleges with uh, meteorology, uh, similar to me, uh, the weather focus is on severe weather mm-hmm. and uh, stateside type of weather patterns with snow and the blizzards and all that stuff. So out here, there is an intensive training course to really get accustomed to the tropical weather patterns and to, to get used to things coming from the east, moving to the west. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing I've never asked you about yourself, uh, do you have somewhat of a green thumb? Like, are you, are you, uh, are you fairly savvy when it comes to gardening? Uh, it depends. It depends on if it needs the attention or not. Uh, the stuff okay. that doesn't need attention, I do pretty well with. Because because I was uh, going to ask, since you brought up the whole the whole science behind like the dew points and you know the fact that the sun comes up like later on today, is this an opportune time at all, either one yay or nay and everything for people that might want to be uh, planting uh, planting crops or you know planting planting seeds, whether they they're doing flowers, maybe you're trying to have you know have far, Does the fact that the sun Boy. comes up later does that bode well or against? I'm going to add to plead ignorance on that account. Uh, yeah, no problem. I, I can. 
let me bring my wife Bennett and my mother-in-law. She uh, she grows a lot of fruits and vegetables, and she sells at the uh, the farmers market every weekend. Very so cool. So she she knows everything about uh, the the growing seasons. Well, well, Chris Chris knows a thing or two about um about having a green thumb. I mean, does yeah, the yeah, fact Chris because yeah, here Brandon was here. Here we here comes a setup. No, How? Brandon Brandon was talking about you know like the fact you know, there's a, the dew points out here. You know the dew on on the grass lasts a little bit longer, and you yeah. know the, the sun comes up later. So would you actually find this to be a better time? To plant seeds, to plant crops, or, or should you wait until March when he said when? We all get year, it's Guam, yeah, gone okay. all the time, early and often. That's the extent of my green thumb, right that's there. Right. Right. <laughs> Hopefully, that's not permanent marker. I hope not. Oh boy, hey, we we appreciate it, man. Yeah, you Brandon, know, thank there's, you. you know, it's not just analyzing charts and you know, like making forecasts and everything like that. You what you and your brother um, and your whole team over there at the NWS have been really good at showing us is that i mean there really is a science to this and it takes a lot of years of training and everything like that but really anybody if they pay attention to it and you know just have a few um have some discipline and everything like that can really get a lot out of this and it's a fascinating industry to to track it's a it's a really fascinating career field out here a lot of people say oh so what what's the job uh uh, partly cloudy isolated showers well there's a lot more to it and, and and we're just speaking to the nature of the showers light heavy flood producing and uh and and just talking about the weather like uh that we're seeing uh for the next couple of days we've seen a kind of a transition in the way the nature of these showers uh, originally being kind of light and just a uh, quick passing uh, the whole pattern has changed uh, just south of the marianas so we've seen a lot of moisture getting higher into the atmosphere and now you see all these little red red pluses that's uh, where lightning is being detected mm. we, we had a couple of thunderstorms overnight uh, south of guam and uh, so the pattern has changed. The moisture is getting higher into the atmosphere. You're getting that uh, that freezing layer of uh, ice, ice ice crystals. And so it's going to be a little bit different for the next day. But this pattern will be kind of shifting off to the east, uh, to the west of us. And but ultimately, we're still going to be kind of windy for the next couple of days. Uh, but around Monday, okay. Tuesday, those winds will subside. Because I was going to say, I'm, I'm actually calling a football game on Sunday afternoon, so uh, or Sunday evening, I should say. It's a, the high school uh, football Rising Stars game. So if it is going to be like a little bit windy, we might see more of a rushing attack rather than, you know, teams just trying to like, you know, go pass happy and go up Peyton Manning and air it out every single time, which, you know, is totally cool. <laughs> yeah. Running well, backs I, need I love, pity, too. I pity the kicker that has a kick up win in this stuff. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Yeah. Ray, Ray, guy, Ray guy does not exist anymore. That, that's old school right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> all right guys okay real, real quick since you're talking we always bring up the fact that you and your brother are proud alma maters of uh north carolina state university who is the greatest football player from nc state we know about the basketball team we know about you know coach jim valvano and, and the championship Boy. how about football who's the bit i would have to say well we got a couple uh we've had some really notable quarterbacks come out of nc state we Russell have philip rivers who played with yep. the san diego chargers philip rivers and uh but uh, so I enjoyed watching him play. I was in a marching band, so I got to see him every every football game. Nice. And uh, but we also had um, uh, the name is on the tip of my tongue. Uh, but he he went from uh, NC State. He played at Wisconsin for a couple Russell of years. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Yep. That's it. And uh, so he's done some pretty remarkable things. And uh, but we've got a, a pretty good quarterback who's uh, uh, Devin Leary, I think, the current quarterback. He, he's been doing some impressive stuff uh, this past uh, season or two. Yeah, and Landon's back home, and he's putting in the comments. He's saying definitely Philip Rivers. That's the only name he knows. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, you know, back in the Philip Rivers days, we we had a couple of uh, uh, good uh, receivers, and uh, I think Jericho Cotri was one of the names. And the, he played for the, the Jets the River, for a long time. Yes. Yeah, the Rivers to to Cotri, uh, they had a great uh, connection, and uh, but. Uh, that's about the extent of my uh, name recognition. Yeah, your brother's also saying Dennis Bird. <laughs> well, yeah, Dennis Bird. I that was my first name that I was going to mention. Big Dennis Bird. Bird actually had his uh, had his uh, jersey retired when we were out there. He was actually our Earth and Environmental Science teacher in high school. Really? Uh, so I'm glad I'm glad Landon mentioned the name. But Dennis Bird, <laughs> he was a, a great guy. Uh, we went to school in elementary school with his son, and uh, but he he was a good guy and. He let us get extra credit for doing weather-related stuff in class. Nice. Very cool. All right, Brandon, thank you so much. All right, thank you much, man. Appreciate it. Science and sports on the show. Yeah, appreciate you coming on at such short notice. Go Pack!
<laughs> Absolutely. Go pack. Have a good weekend. You too. There you go. Uh, Brandon I led of the National Weather Service. Quick break, and we're coming back with Feed Me Fridays because it is Friday on the link. Breeze, Adiana's Irrigation point. and Landscape Superstore. Stop on by and visit our showroom today. We offer everyday low prices on all major outdoor power equipment like bush cutters, chain 